everybody! Thanks a lot for taking time to join me today. Um, this is going to be a little two-in-one holiday-related video on a couple of different cheek palettes. They're both from Clinique. One's a little smaller, one's a little bigger. I wanted to chat a little bit about these since they've kind of been the latest thing I've been playing with. They are actually both um, $29.50. I got the All Aglow palette from Ulta and I got the Get Cheeky palette from Sephora. I'm going to actually be incorporating both of these into a demo today and show some pictures so you can kind of see what I'm talking about overall, but let's chat about the All Aglow palette first. This has a mirror on the inside and four really large pans of product here. One says Mattify, one says Shimmer and Glow, um, one says Blush and Brighten, and one says Get Bronzed. And it really appealed to me because I thought, okay, here's a little four-in-one face palette, you know, all the powder steps one might need, but how do these actually perform and is it worth getting? Well, it seems to me, given the descriptions on the back of the box, all of these products seem to be certain formulas that are coming from their actual line. For example, the Mattify powder is described as the Stay Matte Sheer Pressed Powder Oil Free. The Shimmer and Glow is the Up Lighting Illuminating Powder. I'm just sharing this in case anyone's familiar with these particular products. Blush and Brighten is the Blushing Blush Powder Blush blushing blush, powder blush. Not sure who named that, but okay. And then the True Bronze Pressed Powder Bronzer. That's this product over here. So I do like the idea of the multitasking here. I like the really generously sized pans. My favorite part of these four is definitely the Blush and Brighten here. This blush is so beautiful. I love the depth that it has. It's kind of a rich rosy tone. I could see that working on many skin tones. I go pretty light with it on my skin, but I think richer, deeper skin tones could really see an effect from that as well. I'd call it kind of a satin finish. You look closely at it, you can see a gentle sheen coming from that, but it's by no means a major shimmer metallic type product. But as versatile as I could see that blush being, the bronzer is very, very golden. It does have a gentle shimmer to it, and it comes off very subtle on my skin. And I'm not so sure a lot of deeper skin tones would see a great effect from that. I think you could be a little darker than me and still maybe get something from it, but it's not going to give you that real contoured effect. The shimmer powder is very, very subtle. It almost seems like a classic powder with just a little, like, maybe 20% shimmer infused in it. If you've tried my Needs palette, it's a much more subtle effect than the highlight in there, which I find to be like a buildable highlight. This gives you a very soft glow, and then the Mattify powder is just that. It doesn't really offer much color once it gets sheared out on the skin. It's a very classic matte powder. It does feel smooth, it does not have a chalkiness to it. It actually feels kind of creamy. But what I'm going to do in this video before I move on is show you three of these four going on. I'm not going to demo the blush. I'll show you a picture of this blush on another occasion. So when I move on and start talking about this one, I'll have some bare cheek to put it on. Bare cheek, that did not sound good. So anyway, I had my foundation and my concealer on and I took a little bit of the Mattify powder and just took that kind of around my T-zone. I felt like I was looking pretty matte to begin with, so you're probably not going to notice a real like major impact there, but it's nice to have just a basic translucent powder, I think. Then I went to the bronzer shade and I just took that around my hairline. I also did take it a little lower on my cheek area. I really don't think this is an effective contour shade for me, but it can give maybe just the slightest contrast in that area. I really think it's probably best applied as a classic bronzer, you know, high points of the face where the sun would naturally hit. I think that's where it gives the best effect. Now I'll show you a picture of me wearing this blush rather softly um, on a different day, and I think it is beautiful. I really like this color. Um, the intensity is very buildable. It's almost got like the most gentle bit of plumminess in there, and I really like that color. It's a really nice kind of winter shade, if you know what I mean. Um, but I did go ahead, back to the demo, and apply the Shimmer and Glow. And I used my Moda Highlight and Glow brush. I think that's the best brush to give kind of a targeted highlight or an attempt at it. And as I put this on my cheeks, maybe you can sense just the tiniest little glow. I mean, this is probably one of the most subtle highlights I've ever seen. Much softer than like the Essence Pure Nude, and perhaps you might like the effect of this dusted lightly all over your skin because the shimmer is really that soft and that subtle. So I think you got to kind of look to yourself and your preferences and say, did the descriptions I just gave really resonate with you? Do you need something like this 
Do you like a really soft classic bronzer, not so much a contour? Do you like the most subtle highlight ever, you know, just with the most gentle sheen? It also doesn't come off with a lot on your brush at a time. Like you're not gonna dip into this and be like junk powder everywhere. Not that kind of product. A really universally workable blush, a nice matte powder. Frankly, I like the concept and I like that a matte powder is getting thrown into this mix of products because so often we see, you know, blush, bronzer, or contour, and highlight. And those are the big three that get included in a face palette. But I think having the matte powder makes it instantly more versatile and more practical to just take this on the go. So that's why I was really interested to try that and I wanted to pass along my thoughts. But I also want to talk about this guy. This is the Get Cheeky palette. So I got this from Sephora. Actually, at my first opportunity to get this, I skipped over it. Like I saw it on there. I thought, eh, okay, some of these shades look like they could be a little faint. Maybe they won't really show up so much on my skin. And then I saw Temptalia speak highly of it and I realized, wow, they are actually giving you three blushes from their regular line in here. It is a good buy. So why don't I go ahead and give it a try? So this is the little box that that comes in. Again, just like the other palette, it is $29.50. And these pretty blushes here that look like flowers, these are their cheek pop blushes. These are sold individually. I have several of them. Uh, my friend Kristen gave me some and she first exposed me to this line. And they're really, really nice. They're kind of a satin finish blush. And the shades you're getting here are Pink Honey, Black Honey, and Nude Pop. It doesn't actually say that anywhere on the outer box or this palette, but if you look up the details online, you find that. Now, one odd thing about the packaging here, doesn't it seem like there should be a mirror in there? There's like this lip sort of around the outside. When I first opened it up, I thought, did they forget to put a mirror in there or are they just, I don't know. If you have one of these, did you get a mirror or is yours also mirrorless? I don't know. But I really like the texture of these blushes. They are soft. They have a real nice smoothness to them. When I say they're satin finish, I'm speaking of the most gentle sheen possible that a product could have. I really see them suiting different skin types, skin textures. Um, if you're not a fan of shimmery blushes because you feel like it brings out pores or uneven texture on your skin, I don't think you'd have a problem with this. It's just a very skin-like appearance, if you know what I mean. It doesn't look like something really different on your skin. It's just a natural kind of blushed look. My issue here is that the Nude Pop, I mean, I know they did name it Nude Pop. They warned us it's nude. It doesn't really show up as anything on my cheeks when applied as a blush. It is a super duper soft shade. I've got it right there on that middle finger. Like you can hardly see it. What I get from it is again, that most subtle sheen. And I've practically used this like an hourglass ambient lighting powder, something you just might gently graze over the skin as like a finishing touch all over. That's pretty much the only way I can see getting use out of that shade because it does not operate like a blush. Now these other two definitely do. Granted, this one's going to be more subtle, this pink honey shade, but I am wearing that today. I'll show it going on. You don't have to scrub your brush on the product by any means, but you pick some up, just gently swirl it on the cheeks, and you get this very, you know, soft, innocent, sweet blush look. Black honey would be my favorite in here. It's deeper, it's a little plummy, a little like rosy depth to this with a little almost brownish neutral thrown in and I did add that to my look today and I think it's just gorgeous. Like that would be a nice one to just have as a single, frankly. And then I lightly took that nude pop, like I said, and I dusted that all over my skin because that's really the only way I can see getting use out of that color. Trouble is, is someone with a deeper skin tone gonna see this as worthwhile when only one of the three shades is probably gonna operate like a blush on them. So this is something to think about. Where do you stand where your skin tone is? Are you about like me? You're probably gonna see two out of three being good. If you're even more fair than me, you might see something from this on your cheeks, the nude pop, I'm not sure. So I think I think that all needs to be taken into consideration for your personal needs and how effective this is going to be for you, but I do like the feel of these blushes. I think it's a really excellent formula. They have the same feel and nice soft texture as my other individual blushes that I have, so it's not like there was a big quality change once they put them into a palette. And another interesting thing is as you put your brush in these products, it doesn't kick up a bunch of powder. You're never going to notice that with this formula, which I kind of like. Again, I think it's a little strange that there's not a mirror 
glitter in there because it almost looks like there should be, but that is the Get Cheeky palette. It's a palette that I really like the quality of. I, I think these are nice products, but I think the shades are what's going to be the make or break it point for a lot of people who are considering buying it. And it does cause me to think about these little blush trios from Milani, um, especially the one that is a bit more pinky, the Flowers of Love collection. They also have the Floral Fantasy, which is kind of a neutral blush collection, I feel. Peachy to deeper, kind of terracotta neutral. The darkest shade in the Milani is not as rich and deep as the one in the Clinique palette, but they do both have that kind of soft pink and then also like a nude type color where here it might even operate a bit more like a highlight and here kind of an all over face color because it's just not super glowy. But if you don't want to spend $29.50 for a blush trio, uh, Milani does make some really nice ones. So as far as I'm concerned, I will uh, continue to reach for these occasionally, work them into looks. My favorite single piece out of everything is probably the Black Honey blush in this palette. I think that's really beautiful. I appreciate the multitasking and just kind of the basic nature of this palette, although I do understand why it might not be everyone's cup of tea. Somebody might like a more shimmery highlight. Somebody might need a deeper bronzer. But that's what I'm here for is to show you these things, give you some demos, some explanations and descriptions, and let you make up your own mind. And I will give you a little context here because there's another face palette that I've been using quite a bit of lately, and I showed this going on in my full face of favorites video and it's the Too Faced Sugar Peach and I really adore this. I think this is a beautiful palette. I like the borderline bronzy look that this peach honey shade gives me. I think the blushes are pretty. That highlight is fun, wet or dry. I've been using it on the eyes. Gosh, it has a strong scent. I can tell I'm feeling better now. I'm smelling stuff stronger. If I had to choose between this or either of these, I would go for this one. But I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments section, so let me know what you've tried. Um, what other face palettes are you interested in. I have gotten a lot of kind of combo palettes and some of the different eye palettes that have come out. Um, I'm wearing the Bare Minerals Aurora Lights, by the way, on my eyes right now. You can expect a review on that soon, but as far as face palettes go, I want to know what you're interested in. I have heard a lot of feedback for people wanting to know more about the Hourglass face palette. I know that is kind of pricey, but gosh, this is such a fun time of year for me as far as reviews go. So thank you for taking time to watch everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye.